All right, good morning, everybody. Are we excited today? All right, there we are, yes. You guys ready to, yes, she's excited. She just got a new car yesterday. Let's give uh, Shirley, let's give God a round of applause for just blessing her with that. If you've seen the struggle she's been going through with that truck, then you would understand how much of a blessing that car is going to be to her life. So, um, And she gonna, gets to be here for Sunday morning worship. Yes, everybody say hello, D. We have not had a piano player besides myself almost the entire time we were here. For a small period of time, we had somebody who did it, but she has since moved on to a bigger church. She had never played with a worship team before. She played with us and then took that into a career path to lead worship and ministry. So it's pretty cool the things that start and birth from this church. So, uh, okay, so let's stand up. Let's get ready. Oh, I saw the hands. That kind of triggered me. (laughs) I was like, what's going on? (laughs) All right, so thank you, Lord, that we're here to worship you today. We know that God has started a work in us that will be complete, be done through us. That's in Philippians, and I think Jeff's going to pray on that a little bit later. So thank you, God, that we are here today. We just praise you and worship you. Receive our praise and worship. Open our hearts, open our souls and minds to receive you, Lord.
one second to fix one small thing. joyful noise in this one.
isn't he? Let's give Dolores a round of applause. She's just 13 and she's up here doing this. Doing so good, yeah. The song is called Waymaker. The words are just a little bit funny because it's not actually in English first. It's, I don't even know the language. But it shows that God is a miracle worker. God does move in our lives. When Jesus said, pray the mountain to be moved and be cast into the ocean. It didn't say pray and hope for the best that it will be thrown. It just says pray and believe it done. Do you guys believe something like that can happen? Absolutely. Faith of a mustard seed. Thank you. 
Again, rejoice. I'd like to pray for this nation, this town. Every affliction or heartache, whatever may be going on in our lives, we all have something different. But God never changes. So let's let his love abound in his knowledge and in all judgment. That he's the judge, not us. This is Philippians 1.10. It says that you may approve things that are, are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ. It goes over to 19. I'm going to start at 18 and read this. 
and say a prayer for us, all of us together. I'll start 16. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I'm set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I thereon do rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. For we know that this shall turn to our salvation through our prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for setting up permanent residence in us, for giving us all things and opportunity to walk in your power and see every problem as, as the opportunity to glorify you. I know there's terrible things that happen every day across this town, and they'll be tomorrow as well. But I pray that you let us know and hit us in the head where our help comes from. That we do not forget that. That we grow in your might, your power, your love, and we understand what you allow us to understand. Without you, we have nothing. For the offenses and the things that have happened, Lord, let us glorify you. Let us get out of your way and let you do what you do, Lord. We need you. And I believe this day in this body and across this world that there are miracles happening. And we look for the things unseen, not seen. And our faith is now completely surrounded and saturated by the spirit of living God in this blessed and breakthrough living everyday book. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for being about it. We have nothing without you. I love you, Lord. I love everybody here. And I'm grateful for your power and your presence and your majesty. Somebody says, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jeff. That was always a little loud. Um, before we go any further, um, I want to ask uh, those of you that, Jonathan, can you take me down just a hair? My gain or anything? <laughs> um, we're going to pray. I'm going to ask for those of you that, is it better? No? Okay. Those of you that can get on your knees, um, uh, God took a soul home recently, um, and it was a small child, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, um, but right now I would like to pray over that family. We have to pray over that family. Not only do we have to pray over that family, but guess what? We have to pray over the man that did that. We have to pray God's over him because God is merciful. So let's pray together, church. Lord God, Jesus, we come before you today, Lord God, humbled by your majesty, Lord God, your grace. We ask that you wrap that family in your love, Lord God, your loving kindness, Lord Jesus, your comfort, the peace that only you can provide, Lord God. Allow them to completely understand that your grace, even in this situation, is sufficient. Lord God, your grace is sufficient. Lord, comfort the family, every member of that family, anyone that has an ounce of blood in them from that child, Lord God, right now, send an angel to them to minister to them, to heal them, to comfort them, Lord God. Now is the time. Use this situation in the ways that you can, Lord God, to glorify yourself. Somehow we know that you're a God of timing and you're a God of majesty. God, we ask for the mercy for the mercy on the soul of the man that did this, Lord God. You understand all things. We can't see things from your height, Lord God. So we ask for an ounce of that understanding so that we too can join in being merciful, Lord God. Allow the mercy to flow through this town, Lord God, through this city and bleed into all the world as the blood of Jesus Christ did. Lord God, that family is covered in the blood. God, covered in the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins. Every single one of us, Lord God, without exception, Jesus, comfort the family, Lord God. Comfort them in your holy name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray, amen, amen.
Thank you for dealing with me there, church. There's, there's only one way that believers get to uh, fight our battles, and that's on our knees. That's where we fight our battles, is on our knees. Teens, um, I'm going to pray over the tithes and offerings. Um, teenagers, somebody grab some buckets. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you today once again, Lord God, with our first fruits, Lord Jesus. We see that you're moving, Lord God, so we're going to move closer to you. We're going to pray closer to Jesus Christ by offering you some of what you gave us, Lord God. You own the universe. You own our cars, our houses, our children, our wallets, Lord God. So now we give some of it back to you, Lord Jesus, because you have earned it. You deserve it because we've received salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. We love you so much, God. We offer this to you today. Bless this, Lord God, that it may multiply your kingdom on this earth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah, do you want to do it now or at the end? You can, you do it now. Where's the call at? Thank you very much. It's gone. Spirit took. Let's just describe this a lot better while we're passing that out. Um, so tonight at 5 o'clock we're having a labor auction. The purpose of this, the purpose of this <laughs> is to raise money for the kids to go to youth camp. Um, the first time I ever really feel any kind of movement, Holy Spirit, was when I was at church camp when I was... 16 with my grandpa we went down to dolores colorado she didn't even listen what? and uh, <laughs> it was a girl playing guitar and singing it was the most amazing thing i'd ever felt in my entire life i don't know if i felt it quite like that since then and that's just a little bit about church camp so um the labor auction um i'll let nicole do the details she is way better at that than me uh, we did put a quick list together for um the teens and preteens that will be auctioned off tonight at 5 p.m here we're going to start with the bidders getting a potato bar. We'll have the potatoes and all the fixings for that. If you want to donate for that or you just want a potato, that's great either way. And then after we get done eating, we'll just all come in here, and then we'll just proceed in auctioning off the preteens and teens. And do you got girls or boys want to stand up that are going to be auctioned off? One, two, three, four, five, six. We, and I think we have, yeah, eight. So, and if you want a list, if you can't make it this evening and you want to put in a bid, we've been getting bids online as well. So if you want to put in a bid, we'll put it in for you and see what happens, I guess. Hey, Amen. If you have any easy light work, I'm talking like just watching your TV, I'm up for bid too. <laughs> Not going to happen. This guy's up for bid Not going to well. happen. Yeah. She has a list. Okay. All right, stand up, preteens. You all stand up. Yeah, come on up here. <laughs> I'm gonna let them say their name so you can get a a name with the face. Dolores Lowcox. Thomas. Zyler Tipton. Alayla. Rachel. Lorena Wilcox. Stephen. Allegra Wilcox. Riley McDonald. That's Riley McDonald. I forgot to put her on the list. I'm sorry. She is up for auction as well. Riley. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's going to finance the kids to be able to go to church camp, and we really want them to go to have that experience. It's five days. No electronics. All kinds of amazing. Yeah, right? I could use that. The elementary is also going. One week the elementary will go, one week the junior high will go, one week the high school will go, and that's all in June. The poster's out in the uh, foyer if you want to see what dates those are. We know how many kids yet? Probably at least eight to 10 to 12 to 15. We do have applications out if you need one. So if you, if you guys didn't notice, there's a less of a children's presence. Um, are you all staying in here today? Okay. Well, you're dismissed if you'd like. Um, <clears throat> Uh, they've, kids have been going to the gym from 10.15 to 10.45. There's a whole bunch of uh, basketballs. We've got a massive gym. They've got breakfast and stuff out there in the morning. So um, let them burn out some energy before they get to class. And uh, 
learn some scripture, amen, because that's what children are supposed to do. We're just supposed to teach them and train them in the ways of the Lord. Um, but, you know, it was weird. It was a less, a little bit of a, a, I'm used to kids running around in here. Um, how many dads do we have in here with young children or, you know, 12 or younger or anything? You know, you, you, you wait uh, all year long. You're like, man, if I could just have this house to myself for like 10 minutes. Um, and then finally, uh, your, your wife takes all your kids and goes somewhere and you kind of stand there like, that's how I felt this morning. I was like, where, where did everybody go? Um, but they have a good time out there, and they're in good hands of uh, my wife and Nicole and all them. So I will warn you today, um, I brought my Baptist napkin, napkin with me today, which means it's going to be a little bit of a, uh, 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 a convicting sermon. And my wife loves these, because why? She has to go teach the class, so when, when we get home, she gets to uh, go and sit on, watch me on the big screen TV, and everything that I say on there, she does this to me. Because it's one of those, it's one of those. But you know what, if I, uh, uh, if I couldn't preach about what I was doing wrong, what God wasn't approaching me about, then I'd never be able to preach at all. God's got to deal with all of us about something. So um, we're all going to grow and we're going to work through this together. Um, but there's been a problem arising in today's society and, and it's, it's causing um, a lot of grief. It's causing war. It's causing... Um, unthinkable things. Um, we're living in a fallen world. And this is, this is a sin that I'm uh, guilty of as well. But before I even dig in, let's go to some scripture. Because um, that's the first thing we should do every time. We're going to be in Colossians 1, 10, and then 11. I'm going to be in the New King James Version. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to the scripture. We'll bounce around a little bit. But this is where we're starting. And we're going to break it down a little bit so we can have a fuller understanding of it. Uh, we'll start in, let's start in, um, can you go back to, no, okay. That you may mock, walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay, so in the previous verse, in 9, it says the knowledge of his will. So what Paul's doing is he's talking to the church of Colossae, and he's saying that he wants us to walk in the full knowledge of the will of God. Okay, that's a desire that we should all have. If we're Christians, if we know Jesus Christ, it's something that we need to have a desire to do. Why? Because if we don't have a proper understanding of what our God's will is, I mean, what are we doing? We're, we're not doing anything. We're just kind of walking around, bouncing off of each other and hoping we do the right thing. So how do we get that proper understanding of God's will? It's right here. But that's for a different sermon. <laughs> Join us next week for, no, so when they talk about in all spiritual, let's go, to, go ahead and go to 11. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering and joy. So when you go through 9 and 11, you're going to see this, this, this phrase here, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Paul separates that for a reason. Wisdom is the practical outworking of knowledge. That's what wisdom is. So you have knowledge, you work outwards, okay, and that becomes your wisdom. That knowledge cannot be separated from the spiritual understanding that is given to us by whom? Who gives the spiritual understanding? God, amen, but which, which part of God? Holy Spirit. If you think you're wise, if you think you have knowledge and that knowledge or wisdom didn't come from the Holy Spirit, then it's of the world. And it's not something you should be using on people, using on yourself, using on your family. Um, but you need that knowledge from the Holy Spirit. We're not even to what my message is about yet, but we're getting there. We're building up to this. You need to have a spiritual understanding. Can you go back to 10? This is what the spiritual understanding is for. So you can walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work. That is what we need the spiritual understanding for. Can anybody name... First of all, how many fruits of the Spirit are there? That, well, amen. Don't, no, stop. You've got my notes. <laughs> this is back to trying to answer questions. There are nine. Nine fruits of the Spirit. Um, let's go to Galatians 5, 22 through 23, because these are things that we should be producing. If you are living your life for Christ, you are reading the Word, you are praying, you are getting closer to God, and you're not producing any of these things, then you need to take a step back and think, am I really working for the Lord here? Do I have Christ in my heart? Am I absorbing his word? Am I understanding his true will? 
Because if you are, you should be producing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against these things, there's no law. So they're perfect. Why? Because God gives them, and God is perfect. But today we're only focusing on, on one of these fruits of the Spirit today. Um, so by increasing the knowledge of God. Now, one of the most important things about that for me out of that scripture is, it says, strengthened with all might by his glorious power. Not Jack's power, not Jeff's power, not Tim's power, not Greg's power, by his glorious power. That is the only way we can produce any spiritual fruit. But what I, what I want to focus on today is, let's go back to 11, if you don't mind, of uh, Galatians 1.11. According to his glorious power, don't miss that part, for all patience and long suffering, what does it say there at the end? With joy. joy. With joy. So he's saying you need to be patient, you need to be long suffering, but you need to do it with joy. Well, now isn't patience and long suffering the same thing? Sometimes our mind might think it is. Let me read the, the definition, the, the world's definition of what patience is. Patience, the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. And this is what God's working on me for, the capacity to tolerate delay. Now that sounds to me like holding the door for someone. You're tolerating a delay right there. That sounds like... Um, Driving down Willow, okay, coming from what east, uh, from west to east, going all the way about 12.30 in the morning. There's no car, so you hit green lights all the way. And then you hit Grand, and there's one person that pulls up, bam, red light. You're like, oh, you, I was going this whole way, this whole way. And then they cross in front of your, your headlights, you know, and they, they, they see you, and they know what happened, and they're like, sorry. <laughs> they know what happened. Don't let them see you. They know what happened. That sounds like me, that sounds like me when, what I feel like when I go to Walmart and I'm just running in for a quick second for a soda um, and this woman pushes 950 items in front of me at the one line that they have open at Walmart now, okay? And she turns around and you're standing there with your soda and you're like, ah, and she's like, and you're like, okay, that's fine. I'll just I'll wait an hour and a half. That is patience, Okay. So what is long-suffering? Because we just only got the patience. What is long-suffering? This is what the world says. Having or showing patience, so it's showing patience, in spite of troubles, especially by those caused by other people. So now we've moved up. We've evolved there. It's, it's about people now. It's about troubles caused by other people. Now it doesn't sound like holding a door anymore. Now it sounds like getting out of a music recital really early from your kids so you can beat the traffic out. You open up the front door and you're like, hey, not a problem. And 600 people pile out and you just kind of stand there with the door like this. Has that ever happened to anyone? Is it just me? Great. <laughs> and you just smile and nod at every single person that comes through that door. Now that sounds like hitting every single red light going down Willow at 3 p.m. traffic because everybody and their mother comes out. We've moved from patience to long suffering. Now it sounds like that one in person in front of you at Walmart with that one cart, you've got your soda, you're waiting on them, right? You reach around to grab a candy bar, you turn around, 15 more people are in front of you. That is long suffering. We've moved from patience to long suffering. So the sin I was talking about at the beginning of this and the sin that is prevalent right now is the inability to tolerate other humans. We've started to lose that ability. I know, it's getting ready to get there. Every time my preacher back in the day, my dad would preach a convicting sermon, I was always waiting for him to go, you! And I was like, ah, oh, me! But it's all of us. Every single one of us are losing our ability to tolerate other human beings, whether it be in lines or in traffic or at school. Anybody know here, anybody that... that um, is just waiting for you to finish your sentence so they can talk, they're not really listening? That's not long-suffering. That's not patience. That's not of Christ. So, 
When I'm talking about a lack of long suffering, I'm talking about a lack of mercy. It's a lack of mercy. It is. Well, holding the door for someone isn't isn't merciful. Are you sure? I mean, who made you the judge? Are you sure that one of the people that you didn't hold the door for coming out of that school didn't just come through a life-shattering experience and you smiling and holding the door for them didn't plant the seed of positivity in their heart that they carried home and God watered and nourished? It's merciful. If we all want to claim to be merciful, if we all want to claim that we are walking this, this life of Christ, then where's our mercy? Christ died because God is merciful. You want to talk about patience? Let's look at God. Can you imagine the universal amount, the infinite amount of patience that God has to have to deal with us? And we can't hold the door for someone? Well, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to hold the door for you, but I'm a Christian. I've got somewhere I've got to be. I've got, I'm, in like, I'm, fi- I'm running five minutes late there, but uh, good luck. What if God said that to us? God didn't send Christ to die, but say, you know what? You can die, okay, and you're dying for these people, but this guy got drunk the other night, and he overslept, and he missed half of his work shift, so um, not that guy. Uh, there's a group of people over here. Um, they've been gossiping all morning, so uh, when you die, not for them. Um, you know, there, there's someone over here that I'm pretty sure they're full in sin. That's not what God said. What did God say? What did God say? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.15. He died for all, so that, who, that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. All. You see, Satan wants you to separate people in your hearts and your minds. He wants you to look at people and say, oh, that guy's got tattoos. You know, I bet you he's up to something to no good. Or that guy, he, he's, been, he's been to prison, so, you know, you can let him over at your house, but, you know, just kind of keep an eye on him, you know? These are thoughts of Satan. Christ is going to put beautiful, pure thoughts in your mind about all people. Why? Because we're children of God. Every single one of us. That's why it says he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves. If we're not living for ourselves. Who are we living for? We're living for Jesus, and we're living for each other. We have to stop listening to Satan. And I guarantee you, I 100% promise you that if there's a negative thought come into your mind at any point, unless it's a word to speak to a brother or a sister or a positive note or some sort of kindness that just springs up in your heart to talk to someone, it's not of God because God is a God of love. He is a God of patience, grace, and mercy. That's what God is. So if you're experiencing those things when you're looking at people or you're, pardon me, holding that door, then you know that's God's work. You're like, yes, I'm producing fruit. I'm producing fruit. And that is what we all need to, need to do. So now that we look at that, mercy is tied directly to long suffering. And you know what the most amazing thing about it is, is, is I get a lot of different questions um, as a pastor and, and one one of the questions I get is, what, what's God's character? Because God has a character. You can, you can read about God's character right here in the Word. It's very, very uh, definitive on what God's character is. God's character is mercy. God's character is mercy. Rich in mercy, abounding in love. God's producing the fruit for you. So if we remain faithful, we stay in the word, we come to church, yes, that's something we have to do too. It says it all over. When we go to Acts, do not forsake assembling. Why? Because we feed off of each other here. We love on each other. We need each other. We need to express our prayers, uh, our needs, our prayer needs for each other. And don't just, uh, not just one of those, uh, what is it, hugs and prayers. People like saying that on Facebook, hugs and prayers. I'm like, are, are you really praying for me? Are you? You better be praying for me. If you're telling someone you're praying for them, you better be praying for them. 
Why? Because then you're passed off on the fruit. You're actually sinning. You're sinning because you're lying to them and you're grieving the Holy Spirit because God wants you to pray for each other. So I'll tell you that right now. As your pastor, do not ever tell someone you're praying for them if you're not praying for them. Why? Because that's not merciful. That's not the character of God. If you call on God in a time of need and you say, Lord God, my car broke down. I can't pay my rent. Uh, I don't know where, where, where my son went. He just went missing. God will be there because God is merciful. Christ would be there because Christ is merciful. We want to be like Christ. So we in turn must be merciful. You know, I, I, I had a dream a few nights ago about the character because I'm, I'm, there's these sermons as a pastor, you, I'll be writing a sermon until my deathbed. It's just studies we work on and we write on them, we write on them until they're about five, 50 pages long. We'll never, I would never make you guys sit through that, I promise, maybe. It depends on the spirit, whatever. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but um, I had a dream and, and it was about God's character and this is a study I've been doing for a long time about God's character and you know, and what does God's character actually look like if we were to be able to see it in this world? What does mercy look like? If you want to know what God's character looks like, if you want to know what God's mercy looks like, look in the eyes of a child that is waiting to be adopted, had been waiting 10 years. They finally got adopted by a family and hugged by their adopted mother for the very first time. Look into their eyes, and that's what God looks like. What about a veteran that lost both their legs and they have no money and no ability to get any job and you walk over and you hand them a big old warm meal and you give them a hug and wrap a blanket around them, look into their eyes, that's God's character. Anytime you help someone, this is one for me, this is what hits me the most. When I get mad at my little baby who's about this big, because I don't know if you guys, who, who has me on Facebook has seen it, it took a permanent marker and was like, yes! And <laughs> just all over. And uh, it was actually a permanent marker I used to mark stuff at work with. And I couldn't find it. I asked my wife, I said, where's my marker? And she sent me that picture of my son. I was like, oh, oh boy. So I guess technically it was my fault for, for leaving my toolbox out or my backpack out. But um, when you yell at your child or you get upset with your child, or you punish your child and they still come back to you afterwards and they looking at you with love and affection and looking for forgiveness in their eyes, you can see it. That is the character of God. That's the closest you're ever going to get to seeing into the character of God. And it's amazing. That's why when you start producing fruit, you get these opportunities and abilities to see the world the way God sees them and say, oh man, that's, that's Christ right there. That's Jesus over there. Look into my baby's eyes. That's the character of God. We need to learn to start recognizing that. So now that we know everyone, everyone, everyone deserves mercy. Everyone deserves mercy. All of them. All of them. Killers, robbers, thieves, rapists, everyone deserves mercy. It's not up to us to judge. In fact, we have no right to judge others. That's God's job. All we can do is pray for the mercy of people's souls and say, God, work through their lives, Lord God. Open up their hearts. Lord God, open up their eyes and their ears so they can understand who you are. And then we can understand what long-suffering is. What we should have been experiencing this entire time. Let's go to Romans 2, 4. And this is where the joy part comes in because it's patience and long-suffering with joy. How do we experience that? So you don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you away from your sin? Boy, that's intense. That means your mercy and your kindness to people in your lives, if they're going through something they're sinning, you, just by your kindness and your patience, are going to help them turn back to God or turn towards God. That is what the power of mercy is. And that changes your, 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 your uh, uh, long-suffering and your patience. The next time you have to hold the door for 250 people coming out of a concert, you're not only going to hold it, but you're going to hold it like this. And they're going to think you're nuts. But you're like, yeah. Keep coming, keep coming <laughs> this all day long. 
all day long. But the next time someone lines up in front of you, you got 20 people in front of you and you look behind you and there's five more people at Walmart, you go, you step out of the way. You know what, I'll wait an extra 10 minutes for my soda. I'll wait an extra 20 minutes for my soda. Let's go to first, uh, let's go to uh, Colossians 1.11. We're going to be the New King James Version for this one specifically as well. Oh, okay, yeah, went back. Okay. So that's patience and long suffering with joy. So now if we have an understanding and we accept what Christ did for our sins on the cross, right? And we learn Matthew 25, 40. That's where I was going next, sorry. <laughs> Matthew 25, 40. And I think we're in the New American Standard Bible Version for this one. The king will answer and say to them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, rapers, killers, murderers, thieves, prisoners, pedophiles, everything, it says, even the least of them, you did it to me. So guess what? When you hold the door, you're holding the door for Jesus. When you let someone stand in front of you in line or you step out of the way, you're letting Jesus step in front of you. When you let people cut you off in traffic and you're okay with it and you accept it with joy, Christ sees that and you're doing it for him. That's why we need that mercy, that long suffering, that loving kindness. These are words that are identifiable in the Bible, and we need to understand them. We need to do word studies on them because they're not all the same thing. The Bible is written for a specific purpose in a specific way. So we, our human brains, can understand. Um, I want to conclude with one final thought and one, and one final verse because we've been talking about long-suffering today and we can't finish without uh, talking about the ultimate example of long-suffering. Uh, we're going to go to 2 Peter Three nine. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any of you to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Long suffering is God waiting for people to step into faith with his son Jesus Christ. I'll say that again. Long-suffering is God waiting for people to respond in faith to his son, Jesus Christ. That is long-suffering. That is long-suffering. So now that we know that, we can know three things. God is the source of long-suffering. God is the source of patience. God is the source of joy. Joy is the byproduct of being connected to the source. So if you're connected to the source, if you're connected to Jesus Christ, you should be producing joy. And if you don't know how, get it. Get you some. He will tell you right here. I know, uh, can you go to Mike, si Micah 68, 6, 8? I'm sorry, I didn't give you this. It's not in my notes. I apologize. Holy, the, God's an on-the-fly kind of God. He's a Holy Spirit kind of God. I can't always discern what he's going to do. Because why? Has he told you, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with your God? That's it. Hold the door for people. If I, if I hear about some of you guys not holding the door for people, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's the least we can do. Start teaching your children to hold the door for people. It's a very, very good place to start because when our kids start getting humble, guess what? Their kids will get humble and it'll go like a snowball. And by the time they're four or five generations down the line, we'll start healing as, a, as humanity, as, as creation, and we'll start treating each other kindly. There'll be less war. We'll pray for each other when we say we're supposed to pray for each other. But I'm just telling you right now that it's time to plug into the source and start producing joy. Start having some patience. Let's pray, church. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we ask today, Lord, 
that you give us a new anointing, Lord God, of patience and long-suffering, Lord God, a kindness that we haven't understood before, Lord God. Open up a door and a window in our minds, of our hearts, of our spirits, Lord God, so we can see things the way you see them. We can see our brothers and our sisters the way you see them, Lord God. We don't want to separate people in our minds anymore. We don't want to separate people in our hearts anymore, Lord God. We are not the judge, Lord God. There is nothing but love on this earth when we look at each other, Lord God. There's no crime. There's no race. There's just each other and you, Lord God. Please link our hearts in unity as one church, Lord God. Allow us to look past the denominations, Lord God, past the hatred, past the indifference, Lord God, and give us Mercy, Lord God, show us mercy, Jesus, as you were merciful. God, we love you so much. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord God, showing us the ultimate example of mercy in your abounding grace and love. In the heavenly, heavenly name of Jesus, the name above all other names, the King of kings, in the name of Jesus, amen. Um. I, th- I, think, I think at some point uh, they gave me some announcements, but I don't know where they are anymore. So there, there's an auction tonight at 5 o'clock, I think, right? Uh, prayer night's at 7. Um, uh, and come to that. It's powerful, man. Y'all, uh, prayer. We need to pray. And if you're not at our prayer night, you better be praying at home. Um, next Sunday, we're handing out certificates for the baptisms, and we're going to be doing a couple more baptisms as well. Um, the God moved on Easter. Uh, he told me to fill the baptismal up uh, the night before, and 15 people came to get baptized that morning. I was, uh, you know, I was going to say I'm shocked, but I'm not because God is a God of, of amazement. So, but baptisms need to be followed by what? The laying on of hands and baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's a part of what it says too. So next Sunday, we're gonna hand out certificates. We're gonna lay hands on all the people that were baptized, bless them and baptize them in the Holy Spirit. I love you guys. Come for Wednesday, this uh, 5.30 for dinner and Bible study. Every Wednesday at 5.30, we have dinner and followed by a quiz night or worship night. But go out there, y'all. Now that you have absorbed some of this word, oh yeah, the raffle. I just ask that you take it to the streets. Take what you hear, hurry here, and take it to the streets. Go out and make it active. I love you guys. God bless you.